Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Today, my guest is Ken Moskowitz. He is the founder and CEO of the internet and Facebook marketing company, Ad Zombies. What's up, Ken? Hey, Emmett. What's going on? <laughs> I am here with Ad Zombies CEO, Ken Moskowitz. Ken, what is Ad Zombies? Oh. Ad Zombies is so many things to so many people. Um, we are the world's largest flat fee ad copywriting service. What does that mean in English? We write words that sell anything. Oh, I need you. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, whether it's ads for your business, email sequences, landing pages, all the things that any business needs, whether you're a, a marketer or you own a, a two location pizza shop, or it doesn't matter what your business is. Ad Zombies writes words for businesses. And those words can be in the form of Facebook ads, Instagram, you name it. That's pretty much what we do. And do you, I get to run this ship and it's fun. Do you just do the copy or do you manage the ads as well? We do not manage ads. We have a lot of uh, global partners that we can refer clients to that have been vetted because we know them and we have relationships with them. But um, we don't run ads. We don't want to run ads. That's not the business we're in. We are experts at storytelling and copywriting. So do you do the, the keyword research and all that for what your client is looking for when you're writing these ads? Because copy, I, I suck at writing copy and need it desperately. Most people, most people struggle with copy because they get in their head. You know, one of the things, Emmett, that I learned at Tony Robbins uh, Business Mastery is that when you're in your head, you're dead. And a lot of people <laughs> in their head about, oh, I'm right. You made a very declarative statement of I'm not good at copy. Well, that, that's going to always be true for you because that statement is true for you. You said, I am not good at copy. The moment you switch and say, you know what? I'm going to get good at copy. I am good at writing copy. Suddenly that will turn and you'll be good at writing copy. It's, it's how you approach it. Now, I'm not here to talk about mindset, and although I am a little bit, <laughs> um, but I, I truly believe that you manifest what you believe. Right. So if you believe that the glass is half empty, it's going to be half empty. If you believe that you suck at doing this, yes, you will suck at doing this. And I had a like for years, for years, I had a belief that I sucked at math. When I say sucked at math, like horrible, like I need a. if I didn't have 10 fingers, I would be screwed because I use my fingers to this day. But but now I have a, a shift. I don't suck at math. I'm what I'm doing is is I'm using the tools that I have to perform math at the highest level I can possibly perform math. Right? Now, I may not be as advanced as someone who just can calculate like a machine in their head, but that's okay. That's their strength. So rather than focus on my on my on my weakness, right? Or my perceived weakness of math, you focus on I, your strength. I focus on my strength. Now, but I can change the, the reality of how I do math by saying, look, these are my tools for doing math. And I'm holding up all 10 fingers. So these are my tools for math. And thank God there's 10 of them. Because if I had like nine, or <laughs> it, would be done. Really, I would be, it would be, yeah. So, um, so I would say you don't, you don't suck at copywriting. You're not, not good at copywriting. But, but what you need to do is reframe that right? Reframe how you think about your own ability to write and watch the shift occur. Because when you shift your thinking about it, that changes the entire dynamic. Then I wouldn't need you. That's okay. I, wanna, I want to eventually have the world fire us and not need us. What started this? How did, what made you, what pulled you in this direction? What, how did this become your purpose? Okay. Do you, do you remember on PBS, the artist bob ross the Ooh, guy with the app look bob is in, has be resurged lately and become an icon everywhere there are gifs everywhere about bob ross anyway it was a happy little accident and here's what i mean by that 
I have another business. It's running along, doing its thing. And I'm in a Facebook group one day and this guy posts an ad and says, this ad isn't converting. It's not working. Can someone help me? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I saw the ad and I thought, huh, I can tell you what's wrong with it. But before I could even dissect the ad, probably 10 people commented, this ad does suck. Yeah, you're right. This blows it. <laughs> well, great. you know, Captain Obvious, he knows his ad isn't working and it sucks. He's asking for help and you beating him up isn't going to make it any better. Welcome to the Internet. Yes. The world of trolls. Um, they should rename the Internet world of trolls dot com. Anyway, the uh, so I went in and said, hey, here's what I think is wrong with the ad. And I rewrote the ad in the comments section of the Facebook post. And that one act, that one little decision I made started this business by accident. About 10, 15 people commented that they wish they could write like that. I offered anyone who needed help with ad copy. Uh, I just said, hey, hit me up, email me, DM me, and I am more than happy to help you. Oh, do you see? <laughs> Sorry, I got flustered. That's okay. He just did something. He just gave you a principle, really. Do that do good selflessly and good will come to you. It does. It truly does. I mean, so that's I, what you just said. Yeah. I, I had no intent of starting a business out of this. I really didn't. My only intent was to help this guy who the ad he wrote was for a uh, plastic surgeon and it was for breast augmentation. And he approached it from a guy's perspective. And of course, yeah, guys like boobs, but that's not going to resonate with women. No. And Absolutely. you have right with women, you have to write to their hearts. And when you write to a woman's heart, you're going to get that emotional connection for guys. You have to write for their head and logic first, and then the heart buys into it. It's reverse, right? It's a different, but again, Men and women are wired differently. I'm not saying one is better than the other. We're just wired differently. Right. And and so I fixed this ad, rewrote the ad. A bunch of people commented. I said, hey, if you need help anytime, reach out to me. By the end of that weekend, between DMs and emails, I had over 100, 100 requests for copywriting help off of one comment in a Facebook ad. Wow, that's awesome. And that's what started it. Had you had your own business prior? Yeah, I left the corporate creative world in 2011, started my other business, um, which is a full service video production film company. And so we, we travel the world and film TV pilots and other things. And so that company is doing its thing when this happened to start. So I was really running that company when this started. And then this, do, do you know how, okay. <laughs> Do you ever have to untangle a necklace for your for your wife? Yeah, like those like gold a, herring bones. Yeah, yeah, yes, those little tiny. So you know how time consuming and difficult it is to untangle one of those. Yeah. I I suddenly found myself spending a lot more time on this thing, this ad zombies thing. That at that point I had no idea what it was going to be, what it was going to grow to, what it even looked like. Was it going to be a sustainable business? I I truly had zero idea as to what this business could be. And so, but over time I saw what was happening and it was growing and it was growing fast. And when I say fast, let me, let me just back up to that, that first weekend when I had the hundred email requests in a, in a matter of 45 minutes via text messaging with our head copy, now head copywriter, we came up with the name. I was watching the walking dead on my DVR <laughs> and I'm a former big fan. When I say former big fan, the show jumped the shark. And if you ask me what season it was, it was one of those Negan seasons. So I'm um, all I'm going to say for those of you who are walking dead fans. Okay. Um, and, and so we're watching the walking dead. I'm on my DVR. My kids are asleep. Sean's at home. He's watching it. We're back and forth on what we're going to call this thing. And, and the name ad zombies came into play and that was it. That's a good name. It's a great name. Why? Because we bring ads back to life. We resurrect your crappy copy, right? So we can, we can, so there was a lot of play in the brand as we, as we started to evolve it. So fast forward, 
it's now week six into this venture that we still don't know whether it's going to be a business or if it's just a, a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. And by week six, we had one customer on at least one customer on every continent except Antarctica. Wow. That's pretty and awesome. It was. And I'm, by the way, I'm really pissed. To wow. this day, we still do not have – those scientists in Antarctica, they just do not buy ads. They, they don't. They don't. They don't need anything. Because penguins don't buy. That's why. What are you going to sell them? A new tuxedo? Or, you know, herring or fish or something. Ooh. Ooh. Prepackaged herring. No, oh. you know what they need? They need shoes. Remember Happy Feet? Yes, happy feet. They, they need, need shoes. They need shoes. They need shoes. Now, I, I I want you to help some people who may be listening to this. Sure. Because many people have an idea. They may they may even have a hustle that's literally generating them in, income. Right. And they want to turn it into a business. Mm-hmm. And they don't even know the first step to turning into a legitimate business. What what advice would you give them? All right. So so let's take business experience off the table. Yep. You have no, you have no business experience. Yep. But if you follow your gut, your heart, your instinct, seldom will it let you down. And what I mean by that is this all too often people get in their head about what they are or who they are or what they think they're able to accomplish. And they start overthinking, over processing. And then that little voice in the back of your head and, and, and I'm not talking about you're psychotic and you have voices in your head. Everyone does it. Right. I'm talking about the voice that tells you, mm, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this, or I think I'm a bad copywriter, right? All those voices. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm Touche. talking about. Touche. All right. So those voices in the back of your head start talking to you, and those voices are not your gut. Those voices are, are there to kind of to dissuade you from making that gut decision. It's a reptilian brain. It is. It's totally reptilian. And so, but if you go with your gut and your instinct, your instinct 99.9% of the time will serve you beautifully. And so I always say, go with your gut. I have never made a gut decision that has let me down in 52 years on this earth. I have not made a gut decision that was wrong. The only time I've made decisions that were wrong is when I listened to the voices in my head or I listen to somebody else giving yeah. me their opinion of why I should or shouldn't do this. Let me tell you, I mean, if, if I had listened to my wife, I love my wife, <laughs> Allison, ha- and I have been married almost 25 years. If I had listened to my wife, Ad Zombies would still be a thought and not a business. Hmm. Awesome. So, so are, did you become a corporation or LLC, LLP, blah, 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 blah? Um, eventually because I had to meet with a tax person, by the way, I'm not an expert in that. Um, I surround myself and this is another, another thing. Let me go back to advice. Um, when you're starting a business, even if it doesn't feel like a business at first, surround yourself with people that are better at the things you suck at. Meaning, and I learned this from Gary Vaynerchuk. I had dinner with Gary V in, uh, it was like October of 17. We I was struggling with what this company was doing, had dinner with him, and he really helped me get some clarity. And that was, he looked at me and he says, dude, you're a creative. Look at the way you're dressed. I was wearing my pink jacket. I have this beautiful (laughs) pink jacket and a boutonniere and right. It was awesome. It's actually almost the color of the shirt that I'm wearing today, except a little more pink. And, um, and he, he said to me, you're a creative, you need an operations person. You're, that's not your strength. Yeah. And and so what I would do is is I would surround myself or yourself with people that are experts at the things that you're not good at. So if you're not good at copywriting, don't tell yourself you're not good at copywriting. It's just surround yourself with people that are good at it. If you're not good at operations, surround yourself with people that are great at operations because you will only get marginally better at the things you suck at but you can really crush it at the things you're great at. Right. And nobody can touch me when it comes to idea generation. Nobody can touch me when it comes to, to creative. And so for me, those are my strengths. Those are my superpowers. And so I focus all of my energy on idea generation and creative. That's my strength. 
but I have a great accounting team and I have a great operations team and I have, right? You surround yourself with people that lift you up because they're good at what they're good at. But if you try to put them in your seat, you're putting the wrong person in the wrong seat. You're putting a passenger in the driver's seat. You know, I see that a lot in business. Business will take somebody who's great at something. We're going to make you a manager. No, and bad then, move. And then everything goes to heck in a handbasket. And it's yep. like, oh. You know, and it took me years to, to see that pattern where they go, you know, you're great at this. We're going to put you over here. Uh, and the guy or girl goes, just starts to find they're like we don't know what happened yeah I, I know what happened you took them out of the thing that they were good at and that they enjoyed and you put them someplace that they didn't belong <laughs> right it's it's dangerous because as a business owner you think well i've got a good team and this person is so good at this i i'm sure that they can accomplish this because they're 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 so good in this area i'm going to just put them in this area because i know that they're already good here but what you're doing is, is you're not putting them where their strengths lie. You're putting them where you need to fill a gap or fill a hole. And then you move that person, that chess piece into the wrong place. And then the whole thing untangles yeah. because you're, you're moving the wrong players into the wrong position. And so that's why, I mean, like disc assessments are so important, uh, important. I can't speak now, but disc assessments um, to discover people's strengths and weaknesses is critical because you then know who's a leader, who's dominant, who's, who's passive, who's going to follow orders, right? You, you have to put the right people in the right place and then also know what their strengths are, right? I would never put myself as the head of accounting. <laughs> it would be disaster. <laughs> at, now, at, especially after the counting, like your right. counting thing. Hey, my fingers are really good for math. They're not good for advanced math. <laughs> right. So I, my limitation is anything that has tens in it is good. Anything beyond that, I, I reach out to Melinda. I go, right. Hey, Melinda, can you do this? Or, you know, Hey Steve, I need you to check this or look at now. I will say this. I can read my P and L's and I understand what my margin looks like. And that's important. You have to learn that stuff. That's not stuff that's inherently natural to you. If you've never been in business um, or if you're not just, I'm not a math magician, right? That's right. just not my strength. But and I said magician, not mathematician, because I I am just not that great with the numbers. However, Someone I now is. know, right? And I now know how to read my PLs. I now know how to read and see how much cash I have available. And I know I, I I can at a glance on a daily basis see how the company is performing. And then I know that based on that, I can make moves. So with that, how did you build your team? How did you know when it was time to build your team? When I couldn't breathe. Um, no, it, it, it really went, this started as a startup in my office at the house. This was a, a remember, this was an accident. So this started as a side hustle of my other company, right? <laughs> and so I had, so imagine this, I left the corporate world, had my other business, and my other business is churning along, doing its thing. I, you know, I'm traveling to Italy, filming projects with clients. I have production crews. And then this thing started. And I'm like, well, I, I can't really put it in the office. Okay, I'm going to put it in the office. And so it starts in the office of the house. And we have a couple of workspaces in that office. And then Sean, my now head copywriter, eventually I, I, he's writing after hours as much as he can. I'm writing five in the morning to midnight. I have no life. I can't breathe. I have now become a cog in the yeah. gear of, right. I am, I'm in the hamster wheel. You made your own job. Yes, I did. And I am a terrible boss because I hate working for myself um, because I can't generate ideas when I'm in the hamster wheel. And so at that point, I'm like, all right, I think we've got enough revenue coming in and I think I can do this. But then I had dinner with Gary. And before I brought Sean in, I had to have a conversation and with Gary and Gary's the one who said, you need an operations person. So what did I do? I shifted gears, found the person that I knew already in my social network that had built a seven, eight, nine figure company. And, um, and that happened to be someone that, that I already knew that was in my social graph, right? LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, someone, you know, 
And when I say no, I don't mean air quotes, no, like someone who friended you yesterday. I mean, someone who you know, and um, brought in Brandon and gave him a 20% piece of the action, right? He's got a stake in the ownership of the company to help me scale. Then after Brandon came in and I had an operational mind, then Sean came in as our head copywriter. And then what we built was a farm team. And so just like baseball has a farm team that feeds the majors, we inadvertently built a farm team in Ad Zombies. Again, a lot of a lot of things in this company are happy accidents. And I am it, I am not the guy that is so proud that I go, oh yeah, I built this and I'm super smart. No. <laughs> when things when things happen by accident, I'm real about it. And I tell people because the reality is if you trust your gut and let accidents happen, they will they will figure themselves out over time. And go ahead. I, I go ahead. I see you got something there. No, I, you know, I was just thinking about something because I was telling something um some people a specific thing about just venturing out on your own and starting your business or starting your hustle. I was like, go, you know, that people have that, that mind chatter. I don't know. I can't do that. I'm like, just go do it because that may not be what you're going to do. You may be going to do this thing and it's going to reveal something else, which always happens. You can say, Hey, I'm going to go change just clean tire wheels. And then the next thing you know, you have a car lot. Or something like that. And I always say that to people. Did you see something that came into your fold that you did not anticipate? You know, that is a great question. And one that I often look at and go, wow, what what happened in my life that got me to where I am today? So let's go back. You know, I want to touch upon something you just spoke about. When I was a kid, I thought I was going to be the greatest DJ in the world. Like, Dude, I could hear myself on Z100, on CBS FM in New York. Like in my head, I could hear myself doing the best radio New York City has ever heard. Right. And then I got into a production studio. And man, that was like to me, that tasted so good. And it was so much better than on air because in the production studio, I could craft stories. I could create ads And that's where I found my passion. So I set out to do one thing. But when I found that production studio, oh, I was hooked. It's beautiful, isn't it? Right. And so that that became my lifelong driving passion and my career to this day at 52, I still tell stories. I write ads. And in my ads, I tell stories of name the product, name the service, even my company, right? I tell the story in advertising every day. And so sometimes you set out to do something and it may not be what you wind up doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to be the best DJ, you wind up becoming a great production director and then you become a head of creative. It just, it works out the way it's supposed to work out, but just don't put yourself as a barrier to your own success. Just let it flow, right? Because when you, when you let things happen naturally, they'll land where they need to land. It's when you have all that mind chatter that you stop and you go, oh, no, I should go back to the gas station and change in tires, <laughs> you know, or wherever you, whatever your, your lot in life is. So, so let me talk about the farm team and how this evolved. So we started, I'm just circling back so I don't miss anything. Oh, no problem. This, this is good information. Okay. So we started with a team of just two writers, myself. And I'm writing and trying to grow the business and Sean and then Brandon helping us create systems and processes and automation because until Brandon came along, my, my life was very dark. <laughs> it, it, it was dark. I, I have to openly say this. and I think this is going to be the first time I've said this on an interview. He knows that I love him dearly, but there has never been a man that I've loved more than Brandon because Brandon has made my life so incredible. Like the guy has lifted so much weight off of my shoulders because he does things that I cannot do. And that's what you said to have, have those people who are stronger at the things that you are either suck at or that you just, uh, I don't know. Right. I don't know. And so he, he created the processes and the systems that have carried us forward and have helped us scale. And so 
as we started doing this and the company got more notoriety and we started to grow a global presence um, through Facebook advertising and other means and a lot of people sharing and commenting, um, we started getting people chatting in, in our chat system saying, hey, I'd like to apply for a job. So we created a jobs page. And now on an average day, we'll get 10 applicants for people who want to write and become writers for ad zombies. Well, we had to develop a system. So what did we do? We have a farm team. They come in, they apply for a job. If we are actively looking to scale and add more writers, we will put them into this, this queue that allows them to, to become a test writer for us if they're good enough to get through the first round. We, they become a test writer. If they pass the, the first round, then they become part of the farm team. And as they work through the farm team, we'll give them copy, we'll give them projects, small things, nothing that's gonna, that's super dangerous. And, and then as they prove their worth and prove their value, they get to move up the ladder. And when a full-time writer position opens, we pull them up from the farm team. So we're just like the majors. Right. And except the only thing is you don't get a uniform, you get a zombie shirt. That's, that's actually a really good concept to have. I, I kind of wish more businesses would have something like that because you know they're well-trained once they get to where you need them to be. I, I was looking at your website and your website is? Adzombies.com. And you have a subscription plan, which is very popular nowadays. I mean, in this current time. Yeah. What if somebody just needs like a one or two off thing? Easy peasy. Any of the green buttons on our website, those are in the marketing world. They're called call to action buttons. Okay. And any of those call to action buttons will get you to a single ad. You can go to the, we call it the ad store, right? Because very, <laughs> very original name. Oh, the ad store. Yes, it's the ad store because you can go in there. But, and by the way, our call to action buttons are not boring. A lot of businesses, you know, have click here, buy now, whatever. No, ours say tap ad, uh, tap here, get ad, breathe, or um, see what happens when you press me, or see what else we write. Right? Well, let me tap it. That didn't sound right. My wife likes to hear me say that. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but now you, when you tap Oh, that's it, you got, so dope. Now you're in the ad store. Oh, that is beautiful. And so you can uh, you can literally I, just I think I'm going to use these. Like this yeah. like within the next 5 days. And do you know what one of the things that we we recently added in January? So let's go back to the homepage and this is fun for me. I thought how do we simplify the process? What is the one thing that Google and Amazon do better than anyone else? They allow people to find things with ease. And so I thought one day, I'm going to see what, if I could do what they do. And what did we do? We added to the homepage, a little search bar. What are you looking for? And so if you're at the top of the homepage, you scroll down and you start typing in Facebook ad, guess what? It jumps. Oh. Yeah, you could just type in Facebook ad, enter, and boom, there you are. There are all the different flavors of Facebook ads we offer. And, right, so it's, it's you know, adding things like that. You take the, take the clues from other successful companies. You literally, you know, I'm looking at it. I typed in Facebook ad, and then this the window pops up. Ladies and gentlemen, he and I are just delving in. This is typically, this is not a sales thing. I'm just playing around <laughs> Okay, what, what 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 window popped up that amazed you? What are you looking for? This is what amazed me because it looks it reminds me of that big selling company that starts with an A with the oh, filters yeah. and it has ad store ad, agency add on specialties and it has the number in the category and then you can sort them by. So that's that's pretty wicked. Who did this website? Um so so okay, when I tell you this, don't tell me it was I, you. I started it. And then Brandon made it better. If the backbone of our website is actually built on Squarespace, which is not the best platform for e-com. And then our, our, our e-com side of it is, is Java code, JavaScript. JavaScript. Java stuff. Thank you. Um, it pulls in from Equid. So we have a few different pieces coming together. And uh, so it's pretty cool and I love it and it's fun. And the reason we, we started in Squarespace is because I didn't have anyone. So guess what? It was easy. I, I was the chief cook and bottle washer and <laughs> I had to make a website and I had to make it quick. And so I did what I knew. 
Squarespace, boom, done. First website was done. And, um, and so, but we've kept it on the platform because it, it really, it serves us well and, and it's pretty and it's easy for me to navigate and modify. This is awesome. You know, I'm going to tell you something that uh, I came across. So my last couple of guests have been like I pulled them from the universe who gave me tools that I need to reaffirm and clear the mind chatter in my head. And, you, mm. and you're, an, you're an addition to that because I was literally thinking, how am I going to do this ad? I'm like, mm. uh, who's my perfect customer? All that stuff's going on in my head. Sure. And I'm like, and then enter Ken Moskowitz. <laughs> uh, anyway, but you know, it's, it's so funny. I think too often businesses get stuck in what I call the, the idea of what businesses should be and sound like when they create a business. Just have fun, right? Do what you love to do and let it evolve into whatever, because if you're passionate about what you do, that passion will pour through your business. And don't worry about, well, I've got to have a professional tone because I'm a business. No, just do your thing, right? right? Have fun with it. I, 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 the other day I shared this on, on Facebook. I was talking about how when businesses, a lot of times people want that email address from, from customers, right? As yes. soon as you get that email address, it's like, ooh, that's vital because you can remarket to them. But but you have to these days provide like terms of service to let people know, hey, or uh, we're going to protect your identity. And But when you do that as a business, can you do it in a way that's entertaining and engaging so that you're not boring your customer to death? So like ours, and I, so I used ours as an example the other day and I, and it fits the voice of the brand. And so our, our, we have a little pop-up on our website that shows uh, one of our zombie copywriters coughing and it's coming out of his neck. And if you've never, no, if you've never been to the website, just go to add zombies. I'm just laughing because I've seen it. Right. And it says, love makes the world a better place. So do ad zombies emails with great content and occasional special deals available only to our subscriber list. Have a business challenge. Subscribers get priority access to our CEO, that's me, for in-depth business chats. Cool, right? And then we ask for their email address. And right below that, our call to action button on the sign-up says, yes, keep me in the loop. But our promise to people who sign up is critical. Our promise to you, we hate when a company gives our information away. Don't you? It feels icky. No, it sucks. We respect your privacy and don't engage in douchey activities like selling, sharing, or otherwise... <laughs> Giving your information away, doing so would suck and break the trust you have with us. That's how you engage your audience if you're my brand. Your flavor, your brand, your business might feel different, but be authentic. Be who you are and don't worry about people saying, well, that's not businessy enough or that doesn't have the right tone. Screw them. They don't know what's in your heart and what's in your brain and what's in your mind on your business, your idea, your whatever it is that you're thinking about starting, by the way, which you should have started by now. If you haven't started it, then start it while we're doing this, right. this interview. Because your idea is not dumb. And it's it's how many times have you had an idea and like six months later, you go into a store and there's your idea and you're like, God, that was my idea. But you didn't do anything about it. You didn't take action, right? So the idea that you have today, just do it and just be authentic, be yourself. And that's what I'm always saying to people. We live in a global access. There are about 7.3 billion people in the world. 7.3 billion people. Just in the United States, there's 325 million people. Do you know how many times that would take me with 10 fingers? I know. That's a, you'd be... You'd be um, you and Methuselah would be <laughs> people don't know who Methuselah is. Any, old dude. Yeah, old very old dude. But for you to be sustainable, for anyone to be sustainable, all you need is about anywhere from one hundred to a thousand fans. Yeah. One hundred to a thousand fans or one hundred fans that keep revolve that keep turning over. And with 7.53 billion people in the world, someone has an affinity for what you're thinking. You just have to get it out there. 
Absolutely you do. You know, it's funny. You talk about the number of fans and I, and I, again, this one, I am using air quotes. I, I laugh on a daily basis when I look at the fans that my company has on Facebook, <laughs> right? We are a copywriting company, right? We write words for businesses and we have like 103,000 followers. Like that's insane. We just added 88 more this week so far. And it's only a couple of days. Like it, that's the insanity of like, wow. See, that's two just- old guys talking that. See, if our, if we said that to our kids, they look at us like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> but think, but think about it, right? You could be the best dog walker in Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. And you could have a following, not just in Detroit, but all over the world. That's true. And, and your global brand started in Detroit Rock City. There's a KISS reference for those of you. I know. Yep, yep, that really I is. know. All right. Detroit is where it started. But suddenly you're getting calls to do interviews in New York City. Or Dubai. Because, or Dubai or wherever because you're the, you're the expert dog walker, right? right. You're like, it, that stuff happens. It's real. I talk about that in my book. And um, Wait a minute. What's your book? Oh, I, I, um, I wrote a book, so uh, I, we got to oh, back you, up. You, you, you're, you're leaving stuff off the table here. I am. So I, um, back in, oh gosh, October, my book came out. It's called Jab Till It Hurts, How Following Gary Vaynerchuk's Advice Helped Me Build a Seven-Figure Brand. Good. And, um, and I got Gary's permission. I saw him in New York, and I said, here's the title. Here's the cover. I, I, I won't. This is not going to be published without your blessing because I, I – and he's like, absolutely. And so that's the title of the book. It became like an Amazon bestseller in like 24 hours. And um, it is like one of the business books that's, it just, I can't even tell you how many thousands of people have read at this point. I guess I could pull up my, my account and find out. Um, but it's available on Amazon. It's available on Audible. It's available on Apple audiobooks. It's, it's everywhere. And um, it, was, it was really documenting the journey of how this company began and how, how I started this thing from nothing. It, it will recap a lot of the stuff, some of the things that we've talked about, but it really talks about how giving and adding value and jabbing, right? Jabs are gives. Yep. And how jabbing is what built this company. And I continue to do that today. Awesome. All right, we're going to go back. Okay. You're going to have to maybe close your eyes and imagine some stuff. All right. Can I close my eyes right now? Yeah. Okay. I'm closed. So you're sitting on your couch. You yeah. got your ASU glass with your favorite wine in it. Yeah. You're probably empathy wines, by the way. Yeah. That's a that's a plug for Gary's wine. Okay. All right. Gotcha. And by the way, I buy the stuff. I don't get it for free. Oh. And uh, you're watching one of the earlier Walking Dead's. Nobody's mm-hmm. home. You're just like, I got the house to myself. I'm chilling. It's yeah. afternoon. Sun's coming yep. through the window. And you're into you're walking dead and your glass and the doorbell rings and you get up and you walk to the door. You're kind of like, and you open the door and there sits the 25 year old you. Mm. And the 25 year old you says, I don't have a lot of time because, you know, this time space continuum thing is a mess. Yeah. But what you got for me so that I can get there a little less scathed. Don't chase dollars, chase happiness. If your bottom line is, if your focus is on the bottom line, you're never going to succeed. If your focus is on your happiness, if your focus is on waking up every day fulfilled and feeling great because of your decisions and doing what's in your heart, you will find that the money comes as a side effect of doing what you love. Awesome. 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 All right. Where can people find you on Facebook? Uh, Facebook. You can find me if you want to find me personally, Spanky Moskowitz, like my nickname, Spanky, like the little rascals. Um, (laughs) Or just go to Ad Zombies on Facebook. I know there's a whole story about that. Um, We'll save that for the next podcast. And uh, so you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all Spanky Moskowitz. Or if you want to follow the brand, and I'm actively part of the brand because I do a lot of stuff. Um, Ad Zombies on Facebook, Ad Zombies on Instagram, LinkedIn. I, I've been pretty consistent. Ad Zombies everywhere. LinkedIn as well? Uh, yep. LinkedIn, Insta, Facebook. I think we even have a Pinterest thing, but I, 
Pinterest. Pinterest. Weird. Pinch, I, I go on Pinterest. <laughs> I still use Pinterest. It's, it's, that's neither here nor there. But I want to thank you for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. I want to thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I ran out of wine as we started, and I didn't want to go to the fridge to get more or to the to. But I have had such a blast today. That's good. That's what is. That's what it's intended for, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we depart you. Remember, as I always say, and you've probably heard it. If you haven't heard it, you're going to hear it now. When you wake up or when you go to cleanse yourself of the day, you get in the shower, let that water, which we are mostly bags of, caress over you and cleanse you. In that time, clear your mind, let the chatter go. But once you get out and you wipe or dab the moisture off your body, drop your towel and move to the mirror. That's the way you came here. That is the literal basic essence of you embodied on this planet. Revel in that because we as human beings, as intelligent as we are, have not been able to recreate you. Even twins have differences. Look at the moles, look at the wrinkles, look at the flabs, look at whatever. You may be overweight, you may be anorexic, whatever you are, it's still you. And if you don't like it, you can change it. But love that. Then I want you to move close to the mirror. Get close. And I want you to look in your own eye, the reflection coming back. And look at the iris because it expands and contracts, but it fractal like a nebulae in the sky. As above, so below. As you create things in your mind, you can bring them into this material world, whether it's a service or as a physical thing. It starts in the mind at the top, the crown of the chakra and works its way out of your body as above, so below. You are part of and it is a part of you. And if you don't know what that means, that's part of creation. That is part of the grand source. What you have to do is reset your firmware because someone has put a virus in your system and it's causing you to slowly break down. Get quiet, get still, get still as possible. Let it all go. Because when we pray, that's when we talk to God. But when we get silent in meditation, God talks to us. Till next time, love you all. Peace out.